Hello and welcome everyone to a new episode of the Cycling Frogcast. I'm your host Anthony and today we have a lot of cycling news. The season begun again with the Santa Sturdy Under. That's pretty good, that's pretty fun, but uh, we will start with sad news. Uh, the Leo Vestra passed away at the age of 40. Uh, there was in the beginning a lot of rumors it was uh, suicide. Uh, apparently it was not. Uh, it was a heart attack, um, very sad, he had a couple of rough years mentally and personally and apparently it was just going better, so that's very sad. Two times a winner of uh, the ITT of the Netherlands, um, pretty rough start of his career, started racing, stopped and we took his career and uh, won some nice races like uh, a stage in the Dauphiné, a stage in Paris Nice, and maybe his uh, biggest moment, the uh, moment de gloire, was uh, in the Tour de France with Nibali, where they destroyed everyone in on the cobbles. Uh, it was very important for that team in that Tour de France win. So yeah. We can maybe say he won a Tour de France for Nibali. So, uh, my thoughts go with the family, the friends, and everyone. We knew him and hold him dear. And uh, I hope he found the peace in his mind and in his head. Uh, we're staying in the Netherlands. Uh, we had some cyclocross and some national championships. Uh, I will discuss the two most important ones. Uh, the woman uh, in the Netherlands is Pietersen, who beat her opponent Alvarado, her teammate, I mean. Also an opponent, but different. Um, the, the race in the Netherlands was more like... Uh, it was a it was a pool a pool with mud. It was insane. Uh, it was really old school cyclocross, and Van der Haar won also. So he is keeping his national jersey. In Belgium, Sanne Kent won again. Uh, Mario Robert, Norbert Ribeiro had a lot of bad moments in the first round already. She lost it there, and Kent is on her way to beat all the records in the national championships worldwide. Uh, and at the men national championships in Belgium, Van Turenhout wins another jersey this year after the European championships. He won the Belgium championships and you would say after that he won, it's over. No. Um, it's been now a bit of a, a fight between Zweig and Michael Van Turnhout. Uh, the mechanic of Michael Van Turnhout uh, with the bike change stopped Zweig, hindered him a bit. And it's from there that Van Turnhout was gone. Um, in my opinion, it was not fair. I don't know it, if it was intentional. But... Uh, for me, it was. I understand the frustrations of Zweig. Uh, and the day after, in Oldingham, another cyclocross, Zweig won, which Michael Van Tuna didn't. I, that's not a surprise after winning a national championship. You are not fresh the day after. But Zweig did in the <laughs> bike change zone a little pirouette. And that ignited the issue more and more and more between them. I found it pretty funny. I mean, cycling is always so serious. It's serious. But why not a little joke in it? Uh, nobody was really happy with it. Um, but 
I get the point of Lava Swig. If you have four stations and you can it, you can out it like that, with some humor. Humor in my eyes, it's humor. Uh, why don't do it? So yeah, Michael Van Tornet can choose between the Belgian jersey or the European jersey. I think, for me personally, the Belgian jersey is more important. I'm also Belgian, so that's a bit based, but I think. The Belgian jersey in general is most one of the most rec recognizable jerseys in the peloton. Uh, cyclocross is a Belgian sport, basically. Uh, so I will go for that one. Uh, we staying in the cyclocross. Today it's in Benidorm, but yesterday we had a race in Belgium where Tim Merlier wins his first Belgian cyclocross on the highest level. Okay, the big boys weren't there, but he won his first race in Belgium on the highest level and quick step on the podium already this year. Uh, then we going to uh, another rider that had to stop thanks to BMB. Uh, thanks to the BNB debacle, Elliot Litaer, um, 32, won a stage in uh, the Boucle de la Mayenne in 2014. Sadly for him, he has to stop. It's another rider. Um, I have to make a list of all the riders that had to stop through the BNB debacle. I think it's a pretty long list. Uh, now we are, are on the road again. Some sad news also for Juan P. Lopez, who broke his collarbone. Um, owner of the pink jersey in the Giro. Didn't win, of course, but he was like... Uh, he ride, uh, rode a few days in it and everyone was full of... Everyone was happy for him because apparently he's a super good dude. And now we are in the Giro. The Giro announced also the wild card for the the teams. Israel Permitek, we already knew. Bardiani, Riolo Cometa, and Koratek. Koratek. Maybe um, Nero Quintana gonna join them. The staff say, uh, the, the manager says no, but. There's not a lot of plays in the teams anymore, and Karatek has a decent team, uh, so curious to see where that goes. And with that, we have one thing to go, and that is the first World Tour race of the season that ended today, um, the Santos Tour Down Under. Very fun race, if you had, if you woke up, if you come from Europe and you woke up to see it, you You've seen some amazing races. Uh, we missed it clearly on the calendar. Uh, Australia deserves a World Tour race. And um, the riders were super eager to race clearly. After two years not being in Santos. And even without Dublin Hunga Hill. It, the, the parkour was very... Very, I mean, there was a lot of. It was less printing, more. Yeah, every day was something else. So, thumbs up for the organization. They made a beautiful parkour. And, uh, yeah. The only thing I missed was Richie Port winning a stage. <laughs> but, yeah, he stopped, obviously. Um, so, what is my conclusion of it? Yeah. Um, Betty Ola Dennis uh, both had the leader jersey and basically collapsed while wearing them. Betty Ola in the stages after he lost the um, leader jersey, he showed he had good legs. So that was a bit pretty weird. Uh, also, when he collapsed, he threw a, uh, his bidon to uh, a photograph her. 
So there was a weird moment, and Dennis, yeah, it's Dennis. I mean, okay, in the stage where he was wearing his leader jersey, he fell and he just came back to the peloton. <coughs> but yeah, sadly for him, because he, as Australian, you want to win the Santos Tour down under, obviously. So yeah, uh, Bahrain winning two stages, pretty nice for them. Uh, Bahaus uh, beating Ewan and Matthews, which is a big win. And Bill Bao, like it's becoming natural that he wins stages in one week races. So they, that's that's amazing for him. And what do we have more? Uh, Kokar winning his first World Tour win, it was number 49 for him. Uh, <coughs> excuse me for that. Crazy to think that he never won a World Tour race. Uh, he won some nice races, but this is probably yeah, the most beautiful one. On his 30, finally winning a World Tour race. Yeah, and then that after 49, uh, 48 tries. I still remember his uh, disappointment in the tour after he's been beaten by Kittle, I think, with some millimeters. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, what do we have more? Uh, I also want to mention Tiberi. Uh, he has a top 10. He's still 21. It looks like he's being, he's breaking through. Uh, Jay Vine, amazing performance. Didn't win a stage, but it was every difficult stage. He was in attack. He was in the top three, and he won the general classification with ease. Actually, super nice. Uh, he comes into his new team, and he directly wins a world tour race. It opens uh, chances for him, I think, also, as maybe in the Vuelta things like that. Yeah, crazy. As Australian, he already had the ITT champs in Australia on his name. So a very good start for him. He did to clearly work through this moment. Uh, James Knox got the disqualification. Uh, I wanted to say one thing. Bullshit. <coughs> uh, UCE, shame on you. Uh, okay, there's a difference between staying the whole race behind, behind the car or go back to the last group after you fell down. Yeah, no, shame on you. Uh, I'm behind James Knox in this situation. Um, then we have to mention some. Uh, 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 riders that fell out with uh, some damage, Moose with a head injury, Harper broke his collarbone, Gasing very tragic, uh, pelvic fracture is like the same thing that uh, Evenepoel suffered from after Il Lombardia and Moscon also broke his collarbone. So the winner of the stages were Betiol, Bauhaus, Dennis, Bilbao, Kokar, and Yates. Uh, the youth classment was for Sheffield. The KOM was for Homer Ray. So he also won something for his new team. Matthews won the points classification and Fine won the, the uh, leader jersey. So that's it. Excuse me for me for my cows in the last uh, two three minutes. Um, my throat is dry and I'm feeling a bit meh today. But uh, thanks for listening. If you liked it, leave a like, uh, subscribe. If you want to join me on this podcast, let me know something and I hear you next week. Bye bye. <laughs>